In the meantime, however, we have the most recent complete addition to the Magic Kingdom, a children's card game. It's Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom, a scavenger hunt of sorts in the vein of Epcot's Kim Possible game. Hades is attempting to find the scattered pieces of some magic crystal so he can take over the Magic Kingdom, and he's recruiting Disney villains to help him out. As the Magic Kingdom's only defense, Merlin is recruiting sorcerers such as you to stop these villains. You get several cards. First, a key that unlocks portals to where the characters are, insert reference here, and then a number of spell cards that can be used to fight against the villains. There are several different hunts, each set in a single land with a single main villain. So, Main Street has Corella de Vil, Fantasyland has either Ursula or Maleficent, Frontierland has either Ratcliffe or Dr. Facilier, and Adventureland has either Scar, Jafar, or Yzma. Each hunt basically follows more or less the same formula. First you go to a portal that sets up the exposition, then a portal where you fight a bad guy with a spell, then a portal where you have to use the Sorcerer's Crest on the back of the spell cards to do... something, then a boss portal where you fight the land's villain with two spells, and then you win! There's no prize, but the cards are collectible! Then, once you win one game, you can either take up your next assignment at a new land's game, or go do something else with your life. There is so much I love about this, in theory. I like the idea of a park-wide attraction, giving the Magic Kingdom a unique sort of cohesiveness, like this is all part of a single world, but there are a few weaknesses. For one thing, the locations of the portals are randomly assigned within each land, so the same screen may be used for step one of one person's game and step three for another. This is good because it means if you're in line behind people, you're less likely to see the same clip too many times, but if the line's long enough, you're gonna see something at least twice anyway. I only played three rounds of this game, and I felt like I had seen the whole thing. Also, waiting in line only to realize that you're at the wrong portal is a real pain. Although at least they tell you you're at the wrong portal. You are at the wrong portal! You need to go to this one here! Yeah. Wait, the card actually does remember what portal you're supposed to go to? What else do you know, card? What other secrets are you remembering? I guess the randomized destinations are also good because you won't be in line with the same people each time, but it's bad because it means they don't get to make good use of the locations. There's nothing special about, say, being at the portal outside Pirates of the Caribbean. It's just where you happen to be seeing something going on somewhere else in very cheap animation. Making everything interchangeable is efficient, but it means that nothing gets to be special. And speaking of interchangeable, it doesn't seem to make any difference which spells you use. There will be a slightly different spell animation with each one, but the results will always be the same, which cuts down on a lot of the motivation to collect them all. The cards do have stats and classes, so you would think those things would, you know, make a difference. And yes, making them interchangeable is easier on kids who aren't quite so card game minded, everyone's a winner, blah blah blah. Only grown-ups are allowed to play children's card games. But I hope in the future they introduce a more challenging mode where the cards you choose really do matter, because adding even the tiniest bit of strategy would make this game a lot more fun. Also, the cameras that read your cards aren't always that well hidden. Also, what happens when you beat all the villains? Does it just start over, or do you ever get to fight Hades? Because a boss battle hunt throughout the entire Magic Kingdom would be great, but having to beat eight of basically the exact same game to get to it would just be tedious. And why isn't there a game for Tomorrowland? Couldn't they use Zerg from the animated series, or, I don't know, Long John Silver from Treasure Planet, or somebody from Atlantis? I never saw those movies, would that even make sense? I do like that, for once, they acknowledge that some of these villains are dead, and Hades is rescuing them from hell in exchange for helping him out. Uh, of course, if they get something like that canonically correct, there's gotta be something else they screw up. Ursula's already dead, but Ariel's still a mermaid, why? But Perdita and all 101 puppies in hiding? There are only 99 puppies. Pongo and Perdita count as two of the 101. And come on, we have a game centering around Merlin, but no love for Archimedes? I hope Disney does end up developing this into something really, really cool, because there's a lot of potential here. It's a wonderfully creative idea, and it could set a basis for new types of attractions. And since they already have the system in place, it can't be that hard to update it as time goes on. I wouldn't be surprised if we get a holiday version at the very least. As it stands now, kids will probably really like the game, and it's worth trying out, but don't be surprised if you find yourself distracted by a short wait time for Hall of Presidents. Phew, that was close. For a minute I thought I was going to be completely positive about all the new changes. Just feels really dirty not being at least a little bit curmudgeonly.